Hey guys, how's it going? Here is my 6.2 liter LS3 engine. I'm doing an LS3 swap into a 1981 Turbo Trans Am. Uh, things I want to let you guys know about if you're going to do a swap. Like for example, this engine came out of a 2008 Cadillac Escalade, which is essentially the same 6.2 liter LS3 motor. Other than the, I believe, exhaust valves are different. They're a little heavier on this. And this had a truck manifold and truck injectors were 30 pound injectors. So what did I do? First step, of course, well, I didn't want the truck manifold. So what did I do? I went and got an LS3 manifold off of eBay, reasonably good price. It's brand new, it was a takeoff from a crate motor. So this is where everything starts. I bought this intake, swapped it out from the truck one, and guess what? When you get to the front of the motor, First problem I had is my I'm using the truck alternator power steering pump bracket. The idler pulley used to be right over here. Of course, the original intake manifold inlet was way up over here. So it had about four inches higher clearance. So I didn't have a problem with my belts or anything. So as soon as I put this intake on, um, first problem I ran into is I was bolting the intake down. I had the throttle body on it. And of course, the, the throttle linkage was hitting the water pump housing because the throttle linkage is a little too long. So I had to actually, you could see here, I had to cut the bottom of it off, which is fine because it's got an extra hole to put your throttle cable onto. Originally this truck motor had a fly-by-wire cable system. I didn't want it. I'd rather go with a pedal because I would have to buy a fly-by-wire pedal in order for that to work. So this is a 102 millimeter throttle body I also got off of eBay. Uh, getting back to this bracket, what I ended up doing is I cut off, I literally cut off with a side cutter, uh, uh, disc cutter, uh, the whole bracket and part of the casing here on the housing that holds the alternator and holds the idler pulley. And as you can see over here, I got the idler pulley down at the bottom. Really cool kit you could buy on eBay. Uh, very inexpensive, cheaper than trying to make something yourself. It was like under 25 bucks. It doesn't come with the... Uh, idler pulley itself but you got the bracket and the mount so you could put it in and it even comes with the bolts so i solved that problem and then of course um i do want to put an air conditioner on this vehicle so i'm gonna to have to end up making a bracket on the other side for the air conditioner and run a longer belt and another tensioner idler pulley i should say here is the tensioner over here uh, other things i ran into i went from variable valve timing to a regular three bolt cam and got rid of the variable valve timing uh, I went with a Brian Tooley Stage 1 naturally aspired camshaft. Uh, I should have over 530, 40 horsepower coming out of this thing. I went with a Competition Cam's double roller timing chain. And issues with that, when I put the timing chain on, of course, the oil pump now hits the chain because the chain is wider. So what you got to do is buy an oil pump adapter kit, which is just a spacer that goes behind it with shallower bolts which worked out well. I put it together and I did have a clearance problem, but it wasn't down at the bottom of the water uh, with the oil pump. It was actually with the uh, cam sensor boss housing on the inside of the cover. So I ended up grinding that down and got it to fit. Nothing rubs. I turned the motor over. It's all good. Um, other things to consider. When I got into the fuel injection system over here, um, my first issue was, well, the stock truck injector fuel rail does not bolt onto the LS3 uh, intake manifold. The mounting bosses are in a different spot. Of course, I could have modified it, but I decided, well, you know, I've seen these Holly Sniper fuel rails on eBay, and they're reasonably priced, so I picked them up. Uh, I have 42-pound-an-hour Bosch fuel injectors I installed off of eBay again. Um... Uh, Holly wants you to run the system, fuel in through the rails and out the other end of the rails. Uh, the factory GM system is, it's a return system too, but it returns before it hits the fuel rail at the fuel pressure. Uh, well, actually it doesn't even have a fuel pressure regular at the fuel rail. It's down near the gas tank on the Escalades. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, most, most of these high performance cars have the fuel filter, fuel pressure regular all in one, which is, I think set at 58 pounds. The C5 Corvette came with them. I went with a Holly fuel pressure regulator. It's right over here with the gauge. Um, I got a, uh, Holly has a 
they needed a pressure inducer for their, I have, what I have is the Terminator, I should just say this first, I have the Terminator X Plus um, fuel injection system for this, and it runs the, I also have over here, as you can see, a transmission. This is a 4L70. Um, they're very hard to tell apart, it's a three case, three piece casing. All LS bolt motors are bolted onto. I got a 2400 RPM stall converter in it, bolted up. I got a Corvette servo. As you can see over here, uh, where are you, Mr. Servo? Mr. Servo, there you are. I got the Corvette servo, okay, it's painted red. It's just a color. I think they're remanufactured and then they put all new seals and stuff and call them new. So it's gonna shift a lot harder. Uh, getting back to the Terminator X Plus, the Plus means it runs your transmission too and it'll run a 4L60, 4L65, 4L70, no problem. Um, what else did I do? Uh, exhaust system. I ended up buying these, um, after going onto YouTube and checking out a bunch of videos, which is really good, gives you a lot of information, uh, comparing Chinese cheap $120 headers compared to seven dollars $800 American built headers, horsepower wise. As a matter of fact, the Chinese ones actually made a little bit more power in some spaces. Some places in the RPM band. Um, uh, quality wise, these things are like excellent. They got a really thick flange. They got a, they got great welds on them. They're stainless steel. Um, I can't say anything bad about them. And clearance wise, I think they're going to be fine. As and as far as mounting goes, this motor is going to go into an eighty one turbo Trans Am. I got the second generation Hooker Blackheart. Um, adapter engine mounts which will bolt onto the clamshell factory mounts that are on the car now um, I also got the Holly transmission cross member that's something that I was kind of questioning I have a funny feeling I would be able to use my original factory one and just modify it slide it over maybe drill holes maybe raise it up I don't know the Holly cross member is fairly expensive it may be a very expensive item that I bought that I will not be using well I have it so I am going to use it but chances are I probably wouldn't need it. Um, other things to consider, I'm gonna have to get a shorter drive shaft, obviously, because right now the motor has a 301 turbo in it with a turbo 350 hydromatic transmission, which is about six, maybe seven inches shorter than this. Uh, the motors between the 301 turbo and the LS3, dimensions wise, the LS3 is a smaller motor. Um, it does move forward in the engine compartment about an inch, I believe, with the adapters. You gotta redrill the clamshell bolt holes on the frame in order for this to fit properly, and all your clearance issues will be okay. I got the truck oil pump on here, the uh, power steering pump, I should say. It's a slow pressure pump, which is good because the car's got a rack and pinion system right now, and I, it'll hook right up to that. It's actually in a pretty well in the same location as the factory unit from the original 301. Um, well, that's about it. That's all the things I could think of right now to talk to you guys about. Um, uh, stand by for my next video. I'm going to show off my Trans Am that I'm going to be popping this motor into. And if you like my video, click on the like and please subscribe. Thanks a lot. See you guys soon.